We're down at CES and Waymo has just debuted their brand new vehicle. Now this vehicle is purpose built. This is not some retrofit from Jaguar. This is the latest and greatest. This is the future of Waymo. So Sandy, welcome and thank you so much for taking a few minutes. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of Waymo's future, more or less kind of in the short to medium term? We know you're in Austin. San Francisco, and where else? We're in five cities right now. We're serving okay. riders in five cities and fully autonomous in over in 10 right now. So we're fully autonomous in a number of cities in, Austin, in Texas and Florida, and then we're serving riders in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Austin, and Atlanta. Oh, wow. So a lot of places, and we're coming yeah. to more cities soon. Okay, and now can we talk about kind of some of those markets that are kind of up and coming? Yes. Um, so what can we expect for sound of 2026? So here we are kind of beginning of the year. Where do you see Waymo kind of by the end of 2026? So we're going to have a presence in over 20 cities this year, including the cities we're already operating. Um, so we're, you're going to see Waymo in Tokyo and London, uh, driving with a specialist behind the wheel and opening our doors to riders in London. We're going to be opening our doors to riders in new cities like Miami. Um, and then also we're bringing up our next generation vehicle platform, as you mentioned earlier. So right now we're serving hundreds and thousands of rides each week with the iPACE and the fifth generation Waymo driver. And we're so excited to be bringing up the sixth generation Waymo driver. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So as far as these new markets that you're bringing out, and I want to share with the viewers kind of what you guys are working with as far as, you know, kind of getting into some of these new markets like Japan and things like that. What are some of the roadblocks and, and sort of uh, obstacles that Waymo's overcoming versus working here on your home turf in America? For sure. Well, there's, when you bring the Waymo driver to any new city, there's learning. Um, some cities have a lot more similarities, but there's some new things that you have to learn too. So whether that's um, applying new road rules to the vehicle um, and teaching it to integrate into the community to also accounting for new road signs and things of that nature as well. Um, so we want to make sure that our experience in new cities match the experience that riders are already loving in the cities we already serve. That's really cool. Now, as far as your platform, so the Jaguar itself is a fully electric vehicle. Yeah. Um, is, is Waymo always going to be a fully electric fleet? We prioritize partnering with fully electric vehicles. Okay, that's exciting. And this new vehicle behind us, we know we've got an exciting new name, the, the Unveil. Um, we kind of had a walk around it before we came on camera here, but can you tell us a little bit about kind of some of the cool, unique characteristics and what's this thing called? Meet the Ojai. Oh, hi, Josh. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, and we're so excited about it. So up top, of course, you're going to see the iconic Waymo driver. We have our 360 vision system. So being able to see over 300 meters away with LIDAR, radar, and cameras, you're also going to notice some more sensor cleaning. So what's really exciting about the sixth generation Waymo driver is it's an evolution of our experience. So we're taking all of our learnings, driving in new cities and winter weather testing from cities like Buffalo, um, the upper peninsula of Michigan, which are actually being featured behind you right now. I was actually just there in <laughs> Michigan. Yeah, a lot of snow. A lot of snow. Great place to learn and teach the Waymo driver about snow. So while we navigate ice and uh, lots of hail today in the cities where we drive, to be able to sustain a fully autonomous operations where you're not going to have a human there to just scrape off the sensors, yeah. the car needs to do it by itself. So you'll see some sensor cleaning. Um, and then the vehicle itself. Well, it's like we, a little wiper. Little wiper. Okay. My favorite. Um, so it's an autonomous uh, sensor cleaning system. So okay. it can recognize when it needs to be cleaned, but also to do the cleaning itself. Very cool. Now, talk to me a little bit about kind of changing in the weather. So you guys are moving to regions now that, I mean, traditionally Waymo's always been in sort of sunshiny areas. I mean, we have lots of sunshine in Austin, California, Miami, those places, Phoenix, obviously, where everything kind of got off the ground. But as you're moving into kind of some of these snowier conditions, I'm originally from Canada, so we have lots of snow. What do you, would you say is kind of the, the path forward as far as tires and things like that? Like, is, is Waymo going to be switching their vehicles to winter tires and that sort of thing? Like, share with the viewers kind of what you're thinking as far as, like, what they're doing for traction and stability. Great question. I actually don't have those answers off okay. the top of my head today, um, but I'm happy to connect with our uh the team that looks into that information. Uh, what I can say though is we're validating the Waymo driver to navigate um, harsher weather conditions beyond the blue skies and sunshine. We're already right. driving in hail. We're driving on icy roads, um, lots of rain, lots of fog. So basically uh, building on that experience so we can okay. serve cities that have more inclement weather like in 
Denver, like uh, Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, so expanding our capabilities to That's those people. Exciting. Now, as far as this thing here, um, this is really cool, like the way the doors kind of open up on the side and really kind of welcome the riders into the vehicle. Is that something we're going to see sort of for exclusive for maybe higher volume rides or like what, what's the what's the access going to be to this vehicle when it rolls out? Because obviously you're still going to have the Jaguars on the road. And I noticed we have the, uh, an Ionic Hyundai Ionic vehicle that's rolling out at some point. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about what the plan is there? So it's um, we don't have more details to share today. We've okay. always worked with several OEMs. So we're really excited to be introducing the Ojai and from riding around in it myself across San Francisco, uh, riders are in for a treat. It's comfortable, it's spacious, it's tranquil. Um, it's just like a place to sit back, relax and turn off. You guys are partnering in Austin. So my experience has been, you guys have obviously partnered with Uber, which was really exciting. And I was able to kind of take part in some of the celebrations there. As far as some of the new markets you're moving into within the US, are you continuing to do kind of the Uber Waymo thing or straight Waymo? Like what, do, can you You're talk a little bit about that? We're gonna see a combination. So we okay. work with a number of partners, whether it's for charging or to make the Waymo vehicles accessible. Um, so for example, in Austin, you can hail Waymo via Uber, right. but in cities like Nashville, you're going to be able to access Waymo via the Lyft app as well as the Waymo app. Oh, really? So that's exciting, guys. You heard it here. We're going to be able to get Waymo through the Lyft app. That's super exciting. Now, as far as like safety and all that sort of thing, is this, would this be considered more safe than say the Jaguar vehicles that you've been using? So we're bringing our experience with the fifth generation Waymo driver and validating our next generation technology to uh, deliver the same benefits. So right now, the data demonstrates the Waymo driver is 10 times safer than a human driver in the cities where we operate. Um, when we compare the miles we've already driven, so the latest data is from over 127 million fully autonomous miles without a human behind the wheel. So bringing those same safety benefits to new cities and new platforms. Are you able to share with us kind of where we might see it first? Is it California or? You'll see Arizona? them driving in Phoenix and San Francisco and Los Angeles. Um, and we're working on validating the technology so we can open our doors to riders. Very cool. Well, we're super excited for it. Um, we're going to share a little bit of a walk around with you guys in a second here. But I just want to say thank you so much, Sandy, for taking a few minutes with us. We're so excited to see this. I can't wait to see it in Austin. So thank you very much. Really thank appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time and your excitement and thank for being you. a Waymo rider. Right? Exactly. We're all we're all enjoying it and it's so much fun. All right, guys, let's take a look at Waymo's brand new latest platform. This is the Ohai. Let's go for a walk around. Ohai, this is the latest vehicle for Waymo. Now, this is actually built by a company out of China called Zeker, and Waymo has partnered with them. They've come up with their own proprietary name. Ohai, which is actually named after a region in California. Really cool design here, kind of like a, a mobile pod. It's almost giving a little bit kind of a cute van vibe kind of thing, which is, which is interesting. One of the interesting things that I love about this vehicle is how much cleaner it integrates some of these sensors into it. In fact, uh, Waymo was able to reduce the camera count from the original Jaguar, which we can kind of see in the distance over there, they were, that particular vehicle had 29 cameras, but the new Ohai has just 14. So a massive reduction in hardware. Not only did they reduce camera count, but they also reduced the amount of LiDAR in the vehicle. Originally, the Jaguar had five LiDAR, and this guy dropped one down to just four. And that's partially due to the new positioning of the sensors. They're now on more rearward on the vehicle and posted in kind of an outboard type fashion. Now the vehicle does have also six radar built into it and it is using Waymo's sixth generation driver. One of the cute things here we talked to, kind of touched on it earlier and talked about it are these little wipers here. These are so cool they are just like miniature and <laughs> I just can't get over how cute they are. There is a bit of a you can kind of feel it here actually this is a hydrophobic kind of repelling water coating that's on that lens so combined with the little wiper that's going to go back and forth and keep those cameras clear this is a vehicle that is built and equipped to handle kind of crappy weather. I mean, we know that when you get up into the uh, sort of snowy, salt brine conditions, the back of the vehicle as it's traveling is going to get a lot of kind of salt spray and junk up on the back. So it's great that they've got these little cameras and washer fluid. Actually, I think we do have a washer fluid. Yeah, it's a little washer fluid squirty thing there to keep that camera clear. There's the new Ojai badge. So it's OJAI. Oh, hi, the new Waymo here. They've also kind of changed up the wheels here too. These are pretty cool. 
We've got kind of like a, a dotted pattern on the aero hub there, aero cap, I should say, and then the Waymo center. They're running a premium contact Continental on here, 255, 60, 18, so an 18 inch wheel on the Ojai. Now these doors are pretty cool. They are power doors and both of these doors actually release and then they kind of open up and come back in sort of a clamshell fashion. So this side goes this way, this side goes this way, and then you have this huge area inside. A lot of people really like up top, the little Waymo disc on top, and they're able to you know, display different messages and things like that to riders, as well as drivers around the vehicle, which is pretty sweet. A big sensor suite up here as well. Now we've got another one of those sort of sprayers here, another one here, and over here as well. So it seems like every camera has a washer fluid sprayer, even up top here as well. The LiDARs do not seem to have that, but, and then of course, while there is the one on the windshield here, there's a camera there, and that would be cleared by the wipers. So that is the only one that doesn't have its own sort of designated washer nozzle on it. Look at this guy here has three washer nozzles, one, two, three, little camera on the bottom, some more sensors, radar, we've got a LiDAR on there as well. So there's lots of sensors on here, although a significant re reduction in hardware from previous models. So I'm happy to see that. They are definitely progressing, moving forward, and you gotta give it to Waymo, really. They've pioneered this space of robotaxis, and while there are other entrants into the, into the industry, it's great to see you know, Waymo really cutting the way and paving the path with regulation because there's no single one company that's going to carry the entire weight of all autonomous ride uh, globally. It's going to be kind of multiple companies coming together. So, you know, shout out to Waymo. These guys have dealt with a lot of garbage, uh, you know, vehicles being vandalized. I mean, 2025 was just a crazy year for these guys, but they have powered through. They're moving forward with this latest technology, Waymo Driver 6 that is built right into this unit here. So that's super exciting. Let's take a real quick look at the original Jaguar, just for comparison's sake. So this is the original unit that has, you know, 29 cameras on it, just a ton more hardware. But this thing has been a workhorse for Waymo. It's done a ton of work. And uh, here we are, you can see that <laughs> the hardware on this vehicle here is nowhere near as nicely integrated. You've got these huge kind of hubs. Even this camera housing here, you can see how that would just catch and collect all kinds of snow and build up. And then, of course, it doesn't have any way to clear those lenses. There's no little wipers or washer nozzles and that sort of thing on that particular unit. So it's quite a bit different from what we're seeing on the new Ojai. Lastly, I want to show you guys the new Ionic 5. And this guy here is going to be launching uh, a little bit after the Ohio, they're going to start to trickle out Ohio, and then this guy is going to make its way. Now, one thing you want to notice with this vehicle is that it looks a lot different than the Jaguar. You don't have the giant discs up on the front fenders. So you see this just looks more like a normal car. Yeah, there's a little brick down the bottom there, but nothing like the Jaguar. So much sleeker integration of hardware, a much bigger improvement. And I think that's a great sign. I mean, the quicker we can get to getting these Getting these vehicles to look like a normal car, I think is gonna help a lot with adoption, integration, just the overall look, even what they've done here. Like this is smart. So the original design of the car has this rear spoiler and they just kind of tuck some cameras up in there, paint them all to look the same, kind of camouflage them. So that's really nice. That's great to see. And again, this is not a purpose-built Robotaxi. Of course, these are on the road. They've been out for a little while, but they've done a nice job integrating a good chunk of hardware into the vehicle so shout out to waymo i mean they are they are doing it here and uh, ces have got a great little booth they're uh man it's <laughs> super busy here a lot of curiosity with the robo taxi this year is the year of the robo taxi here at ces and so that's it for this video guys we're here at ces 2026 with waymo look for the new ohi on the streets near you we'll see you in the next video